Emilio Estevez's storied Hollywood career was nearly cut short before it even began. But thanks to the impulsive bravery of a lifelong friend, he was saved from a perilous situation. As an extra on the set of Francis Ford Coppola's Vietnam War epic Apocalypse Now, starring his father, Martin Sheen, young Emilio Estevez befriended a young Lawrence Fishburne. During a break in the Philippines, the two took a leisurely boat ride down a nearby river. As the boat drifted too close to the bank, Estevez offered to get out and push it back to the center. But as soon as Emilio stepped out, he began sinking into the river muck, like quicksand. Without hesitation, Lawrence Fishburne extended his hand and pulled Estevez back into the boat, saving his life. He did all that dancing with death for his extra work in Apocalypse Now, only to be cut from the final film. So yeah, it was nice that Emilio survived and went on to live, you know, his life. But what kind of life did that turn out to be? Yeah, that's what I've been wondering. What the fuck happened to Emilio Estevez? I'll make you famous. But to truly understand what the f happened to Emilio Estevez, we must begin at the beginning and the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1962, New York City or Staten Island, or those like the same thing. I don't, I don't know. I don't care. His family soon moved to Malibu, California, where he grew up with fellow Brat Pack members Rob Lowe and Sean Penn. Emilio was usually the writer on the short films that the boys made together. And six years before he was scooped out of that quicksand on the set of Apocalypse Now, Estevez had a bit part in Terrence Malick's Badlands, starring his father, M -m 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 Martin Sheen. Speaking of Martin Sheen, Emilio Estevez chose to keep his birth name rather than adopting a stage name as a testament to his pride in his family heritage, the Estevez Bunch. He wanted to forge his own path and make a name for himself without relying on his father's legendary Sheen status. By keeping his real name of Estevez, he aimed to prove himself as a talented individual in his own right. By retaining his birth name, Estevez demonstrated a sense of self-confidence and willingness to take risks which has served him well throughout his career. Before we continue with our video, here's a reminder to click the store tab on any of our Joe Blow channels and browse our collection of the latest and freshest designs in our merch store. Go get you some. Speaking of his career, let's talk about his career. Emilio Estevez's career in Hollywood spans over four decades, with a diverse range of films that showcase his talent as an actor, a writer, a director, and a brat. One of his early roles was in the 1982 film Tex, where he played the lead character, Tex, a teenager who gets in trouble with the law. This film marked the beginning of Estevez's journey into the film industry, and he soon became a part of that iconic Brat Pack group. In 1983, Emilio Estevez would work with Francis Ford Coppola again, but this time he wasn't cut out of the film, and there was no quicksand. He played the role of 2-Bit Matthews in The Outsiders, a charismatic and laid-back teenager who was part of a group of greasers in a small town in Oklahoma. This film was a critical and commercial success, and has an absolutely outrageous star-studded ensemble cast. The Outsiders cemented Estevez's status as a rising star in Hollywood, as it did with, you know, the rest of these Outsiders, who soon became insiders because of the Outsiders. He brought a sense of humor and charm to the role, and his chemistry with all those other soon-to-be superstar actors made the film a memorable one. Emilio Estevez's experience on The Outsiders taught him the importance of subtlety and depth in character development. But Emilio Estevez's breakthrough role came in 1984 with the cult classic sci-fi film Repo Man. He played a young punk rocker who becomes a Repo Man, but there's so much more to it than that. This film was a critical and commercial success, and established Estevez as a talented young actor who could play complex and nuanced characters. He brought a wonderful sense of energy and rebelliousness to the role. This film is so punk rock. But yeah, it's definitely a cult classic. Are you in the cult? You should join this cult, come on! In 1985, Estevez appeared in two iconic films that would absolutely secure his status as a member of that brat pack. 
which they were all offended by the name, but it's like, come on, it rhymes, it has a nice sound to it, and yeah, y'all were all kind of bratty, and rejecting and being triggered by the Brat Pack name actually made y'all bigger brats than you actually were. Just embrace the brat. But yeah, first in that year of 1985, Emilio Estevez was in St. Elmo's Fire, a coming-of-age drama about a group of recent college graduates struggling to find their place in the world. Estevez played the role of Kirby, a charming but aimless young man who's trying to find his way in the world. His second film that year was the teen comedy masterpiece classic The Breakfast Club. Brought to you by the wonderful, brilliant John Hughes. It's about a group of high school students from different cliques who spend a Saturday in detention together and ironically get more educated than they did in the classroom. And they get to dance and smoke Mara Joanna and, and kiss. Estevez played the role of Andrew Clark, a popular athlete who was initially hostile to the other students, but eventually opens up and shares his vulnerabilities, proving that he's not just a pretty face. He's a dark, tormented soul, just like the real person, Emilio Estevez. He taught us all that popular, good-looking athletes also have feelings. He, like totally brought a sense of depth and complexity to the role. The Breakfast Club was a critical and commercial success and remains one of the most iconic teen movies of all time. It's probably the number one. The Breakfast Club became a cultural touchstone for its authentic portrayal of teenage struggles, perfectly capturing the angst, rebellion, and, you know, like I said, vulnerability of adolescence in a way that continues to resonate with audiences today. Even with today's teenagers who were like, weirder than ever. These kids today, they still love this movie, The Breakfast Club, except for, you know, the politically incorrect stuff that just ruins their life. And just like with all the films he's in, Emilio took this chance, this opportunity to learn about cinema and storytelling by watching masters like John Hughes work. And yeah, working on The Breakfast Club, it allowed him to appreciate and understand the value of ensemble storytelling and the power of diverse perspectives. So now it was time for Emilio to shake things up a bit, change how he's presenting himself to the world as an artist. It was time for him to make his directorial debut with the 1986 film Wisdom. It's a crime drama that he also wrote and starred in alongside Demi Moore. This achievement marked him at just the age of 24 as one of the youngest individuals to ever write, direct, and star in a single major motion picture. That's like the kind of stuff that only Orson Welles was doing, you know? This showcased his versatility and talent as a filmmaker. That's right, I just compared Emilio Estevez to Orson Welles. Shut up. In this film, Wisdom, Estevez plays John Wisdom, a young outlaw who embarks on a crime spree with his girlfriend, played by Demi Moore. Although this film, Wisdom, received mixed reviews, Estevez's ambitious debut demonstrated his creative vision and ability to tackle complex roles as a triple threat in the film industry. Also in 1986 came the film Maximum Overdrive. Stephen King did a lot of drugs and then thought, hey, I'm gonna make a movie about killer trucks and I'm gonna cast Emilio Estevez in it, and that's what he did. And yeah, a lot of people like to hate on this movie, rightfully so, but you have to admit it is kind of fun. And a lot of people like to say that this movie Maximum Overdrive was not directed by Stephen King, it was directed by Cocaine. I ain't never seen a hero with his ass in the air like that. <laughs> the following year, he would work alongside Richard Dreyfuss for Stakeout, and its sequel, Another Stakeout. In 1988, Estevez appeared in the classic Western film Young Guns, playing the role of Billy the Kid, a notorious outlaw who was part of a group of gunslingers in New Mexico. And even though Emilio Estevez is, like, way more pretty than the real Billy the Kid, based on, like, the one photo we have of him, he still does an excellent job bringing this character to life. Young Guns was a critical and commercial success, and once again helped establish Mr. Estevez as a young, talented actor who could play complex roles. He could play football players, 
and cowboys. He had range. But yeah, he truly brought a sense of charisma and energy to this role, and his chemistry with all the other actors was freaking perfect. And then, just when you thought Young Guns couldn't get any better, they went and made Young Guns 2, which was also a major success. And a lot of people actually like the sequel more. So yeah, now we were in the 1990s, and Estevez continued to explore his talent as a writer and director. He co-wrote and directed and starred in the 1990 film Men at Work, with his brother Charlie Sheen. It's a comedy about two garbage men who get caught up in a crime plot, and it's actually kind of bonkers and ridiculous, and this plot of this movie, it makes no freaking sense, but you can't help but like just keep watching it it's so entertaining and so stupidly amazing somehow men at work it shouldn't work but it just freaking works in 1992 there was the sci-fi flick free jack where he plays a race car driver who was transported into the future and becomes a free jack this film was a critical and commercial failure but once again, Estevez was praised for his energy and charisma. Everybody loves his energy and charisma. But, you know, despite Free Jack's lack of success at the time, it still was able to show us that Estevez was dedicated to his craft. In 1993, he brought us a film called Judgment Night, another underrated cult flick, and a hilarious spoof called Loaded Weapon 1. Emilio did find some time to work alongside his buddy Tom Cruise in the first Mission Impossible flick, but his appearance is pretty much just a cameo because he, like, takes an elevator to the face or something. Estevez notably appeared in the 1995 film The Mighty Ducks, which was probably the first time I ever laid eyes on Emilio. But yeah, The Mighty Ducks, it's a wonderful family-friendly sports film about a group of misfit kids who form a hockey team. You know, that kind of movie's been done before, but this one, it just does it so well. And yeah, his charm and charisma as Coach Gordon Bombay made this film, The Mighty Ducks, into a beloved classic, despite not being a hit with the critics. But yeah, Emilio was so great in it that he turned this Mighty Ducks thing into a frickin' franchise. There was D2 the Mighty Ducks, D3 the Mighty Ducks, which were also very successful, and then they made like a real hockey team called the Mighty Ducks. And there was also a very strange Saturday morning sci-fi adventure cartoon about the Mighty Ducks where, you know, they're like in space and shooting lasers and they're, they're ducks. And it's, it's weird, but you know, I had to mention it. And still, to this day, they're doing the Mighty Ducks thing with the Mighty Ducks Game Changers thing on Disney+. In 1996, Emilio Estevez directed and starred in the drama film The War at Home, where he played a Vietnam War veteran struggling to adjust to civilian life. He starred alongside his father, Martin Sheen, and delivered a powerful performance. This film, The War at Home, it received critical acclaim for its thoughtful and sensitive portrayal of a complex and timely issue. The film explores the emotional and psychological toll of war on soldiers and their families. In Estevez's direction and writing, they were praised for their insight and compassion, demonstrating his skill and his dedication as a filmmaker. Many still consider The War at Home to be Emilio Estevez's strongest directorial effort. In 2006, after a few smaller roles in the late 90s and early 2000s, Estevez wrote and directed a movie called Bobby, which tells the story of the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy and its impact on a group of people who were at the Ambassador Hotel the night of the shooting. This film's cast is an outrageous who's who ensemble, and Estevez himself also appears in the film. This movie, Bobby, was a commercial success, and Estevez's direction and writing were praised. In this one, you can definitely tell that Estevez has a passion for this project, and his commitment to telling this important story is very evident throughout the film. But my golly, I cannot tell if Bobby is like the best or the worst thing ever made. I don't know. Every scene has this intense emotional climax. Like every freaking scene. 
even though you have to admit that this is a well-made film, at times it does feel like Emilio Estevez is trying way too hard to be Paul Thomas Anderson and, you know, make Magnolia at the Ambassador. It's a movie that really fascinates me because still to this day, I can't tell if I love it or hate it. I can't tell if it's a mess or a masterpiece. And you know what? That confusion that it creates is its a beautiful thing that only cinema can do. Estevez continued to explore his creative vision with the 2010 film The Way, a drama about a man who goes on a spiritual pilgrimage after the death of his son. And because he's Emilio Estevez, he wrote, directed, and starred in this movie, The Way. Then there was a long absence from the public eye. We went years without really hearing from Mr. Estevez. Maybe it was because of his brother Charlie Sheen was, you know, doing his thing. Or maybe he just needed a break because he's been, you know, kicking ass for decades. Oh, wow, hey, look at this. We actually did some research into this and found out that Emilio and his absence from the public eye was due to his aversion to the spotlight. He's one of those famous people that doesn't like being famous. And he had a strong desire to focus on his personal life and had nothing to do with any lack of creative drive. He just needed a break, needed to focus on, you know, family. But then in 2018, he finally found a film that he wanted to make called The Public. It's a drama about a group of homeless people who take refuge in a public library during a cold winter night. And of course, because Emilio Estevez is Emilio Estevez, he wrote, directed, and starred in this film, The Public, which he made for us, The Public. And yeah, it marked a triumphant return to the screen. The film was okay, it felt a little preachy, and but you know, hey, that's what Emilio does. But then Disney Plus happened and they decided to just, you know, throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. And one of those intellectual properties they threw was a duck, a mighty duck that changed the game in the Mighty Ducks Game Changers, which actually it didn't really change the game. Kind of forgot that this thing existed. And Emilio left after the first season due to a contract dispute. Estevez's upcoming projects include a follow-up to The Way and a new installment in the Young Guns franchise, both of which are currently in pre-production. Estevez has had several famous friendships that have shaped his career and the culture. As you know, he was part of that Brat Pack, and he befriended Tom Cruise, Judd Nelson, Molly Ringwald, Rob Lowe, and a bunch of other bratty brats who were in things, you know, like The Outsiders, Breakfast Club, and St. Elmo's Fire. His close relationships with these actors and actresses, including a high-profile romance with Demi Moore, have had a lasting impact on the entertainment culture, and how movies are made, and how movie stars are made, and, and how the media talks about these movie stars for better or worse, and you know, they continue to influence pop culture today. Speaking of today, I think there's a Brat Pack documentary that's out today on Hulu. If you don't have Hulu, just send me a message, I'll give you my password. Emilio Estevez has been long committed to social and political activism, like a lot of celebrities. I mean, his dad was a Team America puppet, which is what happens when you grow up in a family of artists and activists. You're like born with a picket sign in your hand which must have been painful. But yeah, even though celebrity activism can kind of be cringy and annoying, he does do some good work when it comes to, uh, what do you call it, human rights and arts education. Thank you, Emilio. You saved us all. Emilio's multifaceted experiences as a writer, director, and actor have profoundly influenced his approach to filmmaking, fostering a holistic understanding of the craft and a unique artistic vision. Through his early acting roles, he developed a deep appreciation for character development and storytelling. As a writer and director, he honed his ability to craft complex and thought-provoking narratives that explore that, you know, human condition. As a result of all of this, his films have resonated with audiences on a deeper level. He's more than just a brat. Emilio Estevez successfully carved out his own niche in the entertainment industry, emerging from the shadow of his father's iconic career and the intense public scrutiny that was surrounded by his brother Charlie. But Estevez, he kept crushing and focused on building a reputation as a talented writer, director, and actor in his own right. Through his dedication and perseverance, he has established a distinct body of work that stands the test of time. So yeah, nobody should give a f about what the f happened to Emilio Estevez, because he's doing just fine.